All right, g'day guys, welcome back to another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. This time, it's our round 13 edition of Just The Nips. Nice. Druzy, you beat me again in tipping this week. We had six possible games, you tipped correctly four, oh, and right. I got three correctly. It was a hard round of tipping. I think a lot of people got the Adelaide versus Collingwood clash wrong. Yeah. Um, I certainly got the Carlton West Coast clash wrong. Seems like most people did tip Melbourne though. So that's the difference between the fours and threes. You tip Melbourne correctly, and I tip Brisbane, and was not rewarded for my faith. No, I told you. I fucking told you to change your tip to Melbourne last week. I was like, I'm going to make you change your tip to Melbourne. You're like, nah, bro. I'm, a, I'm an analyst. I'm an expert. You didn't change your tip and come back to bite you on the ass. But saying that, I said I tipped West Coast in the uh, in the Just the Tips video. Changed my tip. You convinced me, and uh, yeah, shows you how good you are at tipping because I got that one wrong as well. The good thing about you is that you're never smug. Never. We'll take you through the scores, Drewzy. You're sitting on 76 correct tips. You're back up into the top 25, sitting in 24th, and I am plummeting towards uh, the bottom with 397th as my oh. ranking. That's stinky, eh? Dad got three right this week, but uh, he's gone from 104th to 159th. It's Ooh. a very unrewarding or very cruel uh, competition if you're not playing well. So we will shout out the tipping winner this week. It was Christian2125642 with six correct tips and got the margin one off. I did actually notice you got the yeah, perfect margin. Yeah, I did. I think a couple of people got the perfect margin. I thought this is going to be my week. I'm going to get a shout out on just the tips and it's going to be the best day of my life. <laughs> but no. No. So well done, Christian, uh, for both getting every game right. And the margin almost perfect. And the tipping leader is still Ned Ryan, who has 79 with 367 uh, as his cumulative margin. Only scored three correct tips, but still holds top spot by one. Uh, and that just shows that a lot of people got three or four this week. And in breaking news, this is potentially one of the biggest announcements we've ever had on the True Footy Just The Tips uh, video series. I'm gay. This one's actually a shock though. The new leader of the fantasy competition is James England and his team Shuckers with an average of 2,020, which is just outrageous. I think uh, young uh, Sean, Sean Carr, Carr would be, uh, you know, upset right now. Looking at that, he's had a bit of a fall from grace. He's been on top for like mm. five or six weeks in a row, I think. Sean Carr, you going to cry this week, buddy. Oh. You're off the top. Before we get into round 13 tips, I'd like to announce that this video is brought to you by our partners NordVPN. If you're looking for a good quality VPN service, if you want to watch things you know that you can't watch in this, this country, you know, for instance, KO Sports, if you're overseas, uh, then you can, you can actually get a really quality VPN and you get a good quality 70% discount with TrueFooty. So use the discount code TrueFooty, all lowercase, or, or simply head to the link in the description and follow the prompts from there. All right, now it's time to get into round 13. Of course, it's the round or well, the second round of bye weeks as such and we have the dogs lions blues and the dons taking a week off this week there was going to be the eagles and richmond as well but of course that game was brought forward from next thursday to this coming sunday which is going to be great it's going to be soggy it's going to be wet and we're probably going to get clapped but we'll get into that later and then we're going to watch the football yeah <laughs> <laughs> wet soggy we're going to get yeah, clapped, clapped. <laughs> I didn't even think of that as I said it. The first game of the round is Port Adelaide versus Geelong at Adelaide Oval. This is a rematch of last year's qualifying final between the same teams at the same venue, and both of these teams are coming off the bye this week. Port Adelaide did clap Fremantle uh, mm. a couple of weeks ago, which you would have seen firsthand. Uh, and the Cats beat the Pies in what is kind of probably comparatively far less convincing the, the way that Collingwood played. We talked about it a little bit last week on both our shows. Port probably going into this with a better form line and, of course, the home ground advantage, but personally, I think the Cats are a stronger team. How do you see this game going? I reckon Port win this one. I was really disappointed in Geelong's performance last week against Collingwood. Like, Collingwood, obviously, they won this week, so their form is on the up, but... Geelong, for the, all the talent they have, we fucking say it all the time, but they should be winning just about every week convincingly as well. I don't think they're in the best form. Uh, they lost last time at uh, Adelaide Oval. I reckon Paul will get the job done mm, by um, 16 points. Yeah, I agree with all of that. The home ground advantage is compelling. Geelong are certainly good enough to win this game, and Port Adelaide's record against the top teams this year has been a little shaky. Nonetheless, I think this is the week that they they you know hold firm. I think they'll win yeah. by like 12 points. The second game of the round is Sydney versus Hawthorne at the SCG. Hawthorne coming off the bye and Sydney coming off a nine-point win against St Kilda, a game they were potentially lucky to win um, thanks to Jack Higgins missing a few opportunities oh, in that last quarter. You watched that game. Was that frustrating? For, oh, as a St Kilda fan, it would have been. Yeah, um, yeah Sydney fans were very lucky to have a win after that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jack Higgins cooked it. The Swans have won three of their last four other than a close loss to Fremantle um, and they've just sort of been getting the job done and not really been you know, playing out of their skins, but... Yeah. 
not the hardest of opponents. And to fact, the fact that they were probably nearly four and over over that stretch is probably like it's really good for their season. The fact that they were playing a lot better early in the season, but you know they're still they're still chalking up the wins. Contrast that Hawthorne have not really been competitive in any of their last five games. I think mm. they got within four goals of Carlton. Not really a great achievement. Um, and then obviously lost to North Melbourne in that time as well. So they're in an absolute stinking form slump. Uh, and then there's also lost the Gold Coast as well. Big lost to Gold Coast as well. So they are better than their form is suggesting. So I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, play a good game, you know, soon. Yeah. It's just a matter of when that's going to happen. I think they go all right at the SCG and mm-hmm. Sydney aren't necessarily the strongest team at their home ground as well. Can Hawthorne snap their losing streak this week? No, I don't think so. I think Sydney are still a good side. As you said, they're not in great form, like their early season form. They were bloody red hot, but now they're sort of cooled down a little bit. They're more of an orange now. Mm. Is orange colder than red? Yeah. Yeah, Sydney lucky to get a result last week, as you said. Um, But yeah, I'll tip Sydney this week to get it done against Hawthorne. Because Hawthorne, I don't know, they're just not clicking there at the moment. So um, I'll go Sydney to win this one by 28. I'm... Going to expect a strangely good game where Hawthorne probably brings Sydney down to their level. I guess that doesn't make for a good game, but uh, nonetheless, I think it would be kind of close. Yeah. Uh, just because I don't know why, but Hawthorne, I feel like generally do well against Sydney. I could, but you're going to tip Sydney. I am you? definitely going to tip <laughs> Sydney by nine points, though. I think it'll be closer. Oh, that was a the third game of the round is arguably the biggest blockbuster of the round. You've got Fremantle holding, hosting rather the Gold Coast Suns at Optus Stadium. Fremantle have lost two in a row to kind of contenders, you could kind of say, with Port mm. Adelaide and the Dogs. So no real shame in that. Although it didn't get particularly close to the Dog uh, to uh, Port rather. And then with the Dogs, they probably had a good chance of winning that if you didn't have four massive injuries go down. So it was Griffin Logue, Brendan Cox. Nat Fife and Sean Darcy, all really key players to how Fremantle are going at the moment. Absolutely stinky. We'll look at Gold Coast as well, and their last performance before the bye was a good crushing win over Hawthorne. Maybe a bit of confidence into that young team, and that's good, sort of timely for that young team to have a rest. They've had some really good players. Uh, Tuke Miller, Brandon Ellis, Lukosius is play, playing well, but I think Ben King's probably mm. their standout. I have him in my All-Australian team at the moment as the third tall forward. Considering you guys don't have any key backs, how vulnerable are Frio here? Quite. Quite. Quite vulnerable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Against West Coast... Like, every forward entry you guys had, like, you were pretty much scoring off. Mm-hmm. When we don't have, like, four of our key backs, so Joel Hamling's out for the season, Alex Pierce, he actually might be back in. Griff Logue, he's been pretty solid for us, and Brendan Cox has been one of our best this season. So, three big outs down back. Sean Darcy in the ruck as well, if he's out, looks like he's just done a hammy. So, mm-hmm. that that's huge as well. Obviously, Nat Fife, fucking don't need to say how much, yeah. how important he is to our team. It's going to be a tighter affair than it would have been if we didn't um, lose all these players. I'm not really sure which way this game's going to go still, to be honest. If we had all those players in, I would have tipped Frio comfortably, but I just see Gold Coast getting, like, I don't know, I, I'd see them being efficient with their entries that once the ball goes in, they'll score um, quite often. But if we can win the battle of the midfield, which we should, I think we should be okay. Hopefully, Matt Tavener back as well. Mm. I'll tip the Dockers. Yeah. I'll tip Frio to win this one by 21 points. This game is uh, it's a toss up for me a little bit just purely because of the injuries. If it was uh, yeah, if, if Fremantle were closer to being fit, not even fully fit, but you know didn't have so many key backs injured. We literally um, have like seven defenders out. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and I think Gold Coast on their day is good enough to burn you for that. Yeah. I think they're, they're damaging enough. And Ben King, who's going to play on him? Like Luke Ryan or something? Maybe yeah. Alex Pierce, but um, if, if not, then it's probably like Luke Ryan or something. Yeah, but like. Sexton always does a business on Frio as well. Mm. He always shows up against Frio Sexton. Yeah, okay. So yeah, they've got some damaging options there. I will also tip Fremantle. I will tip Fremantle, but this is probably my upset of the round. Yeah, no, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah. The fourth game of the round is St. Kilda hosting Adelaide at Kazali Stadium up in Cairns, because of course there can't be any football in Melbourne at the moment. Both of these teams fell short narrowly last week. Uh, the Saints, as we discussed, um, fell short against Sydney with Jack Higgins, you know, taking a turd on the uh, on the actual turf. And then uh, Adelaide, obviously, getting done by Collingwood and the Jamie Elliott show as well, which is mm. a bit of a burn for them. We've talked about how they've been a good competitive side, um, but nonetheless, I'll probably look at that loss and be like, oh, we probably should have won that mm. against the bottom three team. For the Saints, the midfield performed pretty strongly in their loss. I think Crouch had 38, Steele had 31. Uh, Crouch's probably been a pretty good recruit yeah, this year sure. as well. Um, and the Crows lost despite, you know, their regulars doing real well. I mean, Laird had 40 touches, Ben Keys was prominent and Seedsman was probably up there for best on ground as well behind 
probably um, Laird and Elliot mm-hmm. could be close. Crows have dropped four of their last five. I want us. I want to give them a chance here. Like I feel like they're good enough to win this, but the form is trending in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. The only one that they've won is against Melbourne, which makes them really hard to read. So how, how do you see this game going? I don't know. I feel like St Kilda are almost like clawing back to some sniff of finals. I don't think they'll make it, mm. but um, their performance last week was really good. Do you it, think it's that, or is it just their expect our expectations of them have dropped so much? Yeah. Oh, it's a bit of both in it. Like yeah. our expectations have dropped, but they have been playing yeah absolutely terribly this season. Mm. So I don't know. I think they're sort of granted those expectations we have of the Saints at this stage. Yeah, I'll, I'll tip Saint Kilda this week. I was impressed with how they played against Sydney. Literally, just a couple bad kicks away from winning. True. So, um, yeah, I'll tip. I'll tip Saint Kilda to win up in Cairns by. Oh, this will be a close one because Adelaide have played in a few close games. Mm. I reckon it'll be three points. I'll go with Blockbuster. Saint mm. Kilda win it. Wow, Clash of the Titans, you could say. Um, I'm going to agree with you, St. Kilda. I have just a bit more faith will show up to play. Because yeah. Adelaide, I mean, Adelaide will show up to play, but yeah, I mean, other than the one win, I just can't back them at the moment. Mm. But they're definitely good enough to win. So I'll say St. Kilda by 17. Next up, we are getting a treat after treat in, <laughs> in round 13. North Melbourne hosting GWS uh, at Blundstone Arena. So two of the smallest fan bases in the league playing in Tasmania. <laughs> Can't wait. Local football. We love it. <laughs> Both teams are uh, coming off the bye. So, um, you know, the form lines mean a little bit less. Sometimes if you, when you come off a bye, you come out a new team. But uh, before that, North had a 20-point loss to St. Kilda. Kind of respectable considering, you know, St. Kilda... Even though they're playing a shit sort of season, the the level it should have been a lot higher than North, and they yeah. they kicked five goals in one of the last terms, didn't disgrace themselves. Contrast that the Giants had been playing so well for so long, went to the Gabba. I thought they were really going to challenge the Lions, and they got absolutely smacked. And it still remains to be seen whether it was just Brisbane being amazing, just GWS being poor, or a combination of both. Um, yeah, we could put it down on an off day because you know going to the Gabba and beating Brisbane is a very very hard thing for any team to do at the moment. Um, GWS have won two of the last three against North at this ground, so I, I've been previously talking about how North are hard to beat down there, but GWS don't seem to have any issues with it. For the Giants, they'll be looking at this game as, I mean, they probably get to the point where they can't really drop too many more winnable yeah. ones. That top eight, is it's a really tough sort of top eight to crack, and this would be a really bad away game to drop. How do you see it going? I think the Giants have to get up here. They mm. need a result after that loss at the Gabba. Like, they looked like they were just climbing again, and then just got fucking right straight to the face, mate. And they're fucking... Wrecked them. Wrecked them, exactly. <laughs> but basically, the climate in Canberra is quite similar to Tasmania. It's quite cold and like, people wear like jackets and gloves and coats and that. So I think GWS are quite used to the cold and that. So they'll go down to Tasmania. They'll have all the right clothes to stay nice and warm all day. And they'll beat the Kangaroos by 23 points. Oh, yeah. I hate agreeing with you on all of these games because I need to catch up tips, but I'm going to agree with you. The Giants should win this. I think the thing about Blundstone is that it's the tough conditions, really swirly breeze, and North Melbourne sort of navigate that a little bit better, but GWS just have too much list quality. The, yeah. Like, their midfield is, is fantastic. So I'm going to back them in to win by, yeah, 26 points. All right, moving on to the penultimate game of the round. This was the fixture that was brought forward a week to accommodate Richmond for some kind of reason. I thought it made sense because Richmond... We're going to be in Perth anyway, but apparently they're flying to Sydney and then back, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I don't know what's sure happening there, not. but we won't focus on that. But either way, it's going to be a drizzly Sunday night, which mm-hmm. probably you know favours Richmond a little bit because they're a strong wet weather team and we have to be one of the worst wet weather teams <laughs> anyway. But the Eagles obviously went to Sydney uh, last week, won the, for the first time in 22 years. So my entire time of watching football, we've never won in the SCG and we didn't even do it against Sydney. But uh, <laughs> either way, like... I won't bang on about Eagles injuries, but it's getting ridiculous now. Josh Kennedy was out, Oscar Allen, Tim Kelly, on top of all the other ones we already knew about. Yeah. And then Brad Shepard gets concussed as well, so he's going to be out for this game as well. So, But nonetheless, a good victory against you know a trash opponent, I have to say. Um, we'll talk about Carlton a little bit more on the Drew Footy Show. But either way, uh, it was a really good to see sort of the leaders and the young guys step up. We had a few debutants. And then, to contrast that, Richmond is coming off a really good performance in the showdown. Nope. Dream time. <laughs> Fuck. The dream time showdown. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We rescued that. So obviously, we attended the uh, the Dreamtime Showdown at Optus. Um, really good game. But both teams. Um, I just ran with the yeah. Dreamtime Showdown. Yeah. So they kind of weathered the Essendon storm. It felt like Essendon were almost better for longer periods of that game without necessarily scoring. And then when they got their run on, it looked like they would overrun them. But Richmond just kind of had the poise at all times to to respond when that happened. And how good was Shy Bolton in that last oh, quarter as well? Orgasmic. Okay. Absolute stinky goals. Like yeah. it was fantastic. And uh, Richmond are a very hard team to beat at the moment. I feel like we, we might have seen them click into gear so 
How do you see this game going in Perth? I think the way that Essendon lost that game was by not having any key forwards that could take marks and kick set shots. Mm. Kennedy and Allen are out though, so you sort uh, of... I think Allen will be back in and Kennedy's are maybe as well. Okay. So they might be back in, yeah. Well, that's a positive you can look at. Like, yeah. That's... Yeah. It'd be wet though. The way that Essendon played Richmond last week, they were just sort of bombing it in and hoping for the best. Like mm-hmm. West Coast aren't one of those sides that just kick it long. They always kick to a lead yep. um, in the 50, which good, is what good sides do. So you could catch them out potentially and just put some score on the board. West Coast are the most accurate goal kicking side in the competition. Richmond looked good last week. I wouldn't say great. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, whether whether the Storm didn't have too much of the ball, but was sort of in control of the game for about 90% of it, except for the start of that fourth quarter. But yeah, whether that come out on top, I don't know which way this game's going. I tipped against West Coast last week and regretted it. Uh, they're at home. They're a strong side at home. But I mean, Essendon beat West Coast. Richmond beat Essendon. So by logical theorems and that, Richmond win. I'll tip Richmond for now. Uh, by 15. Mm. I think you'd have to be a very brave man to tip against Richmond in this game. Yeah. You're right in that maybe Richmond didn't play you know their absolute A game again against Essendon, but Essendon are a half decent side and they mm. had some good players you know playing well. Darcy Parrish was insane, and any time you beat that team by seven goals like they did, yeah. um, you know you have to give them credit. So I think they've got that capacity just to lift when the when the game gets hot. I think if the Eagles, def- if it wasn't wet. And if we had an extra midfielder in, I'd be giving us a stronger chance. Yeah. But in the drizzly, you know, wet against Richmond, I can, I'm, I'm not excited about this game. I think we'll probably go down by about five goals, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. So. But if you win, it's like a season-defining win. Just about, like, yeah. pushing in great set for the rest of the season, considering all of the adversity you guys are going through at the moment. Yeah, I would agree with the, the narrative of it being special. I mean, I, I kind of always thought we were going to win this game at the start of the year, so yeah. if we win it, it doesn't really make up for the Essendon loss. Yeah, it would be a great story, mm. but it would still, I'd probably think, yeah, maybe finals. All right, the final game of the round, a real blockbuster. Melbourne versus Collingwood. It's not, it's not. It's been a while since Melbourne's played Collingwood, and I think they've been the overwhelming favourites. Mm. Usually Collingwood have been a strong team, and you know what Melbourne's been like over the last decade, other than a couple of years. But this game um, will be at the SCG, which will be strange, right. because obviously, obviously no games in Melbourne. Melbourne. Melbourne obviously came overcame uh, the Lions in a really good game. You mm-hmm. live stream day. Yeah, such a good game. I love the days. Yeah, it looked like the usual suspects did well. Petrarca, Clayton Oliver, um, Gorn, and Tom McDonald as well. This seems to be really mm-hmm. resurging this year. He's been really consistent since that Sydney game kick four. I think he's been pretty good most weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, clearly the team to beat. Would you agree with that? Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, doubt. no doubt. I think they've kind of disposed of every major contender. Their only loss was against Adelaide. There's no one really that I think... If they, beat, if they beat Port Adelaide and West Coast, that's it. They've gone through the pack. Do you really include West Coast in that? West Coast is just one of those teams that will always show up. Like I just think West Coast are in that mix of teams that if they have like four good games in a row, they can win the flag. So yeah. I just think they're an important side to tick off yeah, the yeah. beat list. I understand what you mean by that. Collingwood, they had a really good morale-lifting win against Adelaide. Yeah. Uh, you've been talking about it in particular. You think they've been playing well but didn't have the reward over the last mm. few weeks, and it's good to see them get that reward. And Jamie Elliott bagged six. Um, he was fantastic. Poulter, probably not far off in the Rising Star nomination. Yeah. I'll shout him out. He had like He's in my fantasy team, so I've paid attention. But he got 104, a goal, 20 Huge. possessions, 10 marks. So, yeah, no, uh, I think Nick Cox will probably get it. Oh, it's probably been announced by the yeah, time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm sure it'll be Nick Cox, but Kelly Poulter's probably only a few weeks off getting that as well. As I said, huge morale boost as much as anything to get the reward. Things are a little bit miserable at Collingwood at the moment. Um, yeah. So, I don't know if that will give him enough momentum to springboard into this game to upset Melbourne. So... What are your thoughts? I wouldn't be surprised if there was an upset here. Really? I wouldn't be surprised, but I will tip Melbourne just before I say anything else. Yeah. Collingwood, uh, I was happy to see them win because, yeah, they've been playing really hard. And when you're playing hard with a lot of integrity and passion, um, it's hard to not get results. Like, you can't really do much more than what they've been doing over the last few weeks. But mm-hmm. when you're not converting on the scoreboard, obviously, you're not going to win games. Jamie Elliott comes into the side, kicks six, and it makes a difference. You're so, right, yeah. um, good on the pies for that. But Melbourne are the best team in the comp at the moment. No looking past them. They'll win this game comfortably, probably by about 30 points. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Collingwood have just done what Melbourne failed to do a couple of weeks ago as well. So they'll maybe get a little bit of confidence, confidence yeah. from that. But Melbourne are just too damn good at the moment. And I, I thought Brisbane would beat them, And uh, even though I thought Melbourne were better. There's a chance that maybe they've lifted themselves for a big game against Brisbane. And sometimes when that happens, you don't lift yourself the next week because mm. you're a bit flat. But... 
Nah, Melbourne. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, Uh, Melbourne by like seven goals. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So for my upset of the round, I did say Gold Coast over Fremantle. Would you go as far as to say Melbourne Collingwood is your upset of the round? Yeah, I reckon Collingwood could get the job done here. I don't know. After we just backed Melbourne by seven goals. Yeah. (laughs) No, I don't know. I just have a stinky feeling that Collingwood will make a contest out of this. And Mm -hmm. um, if they can have the same sort of scoreboard effect as they did last week, could get the job done. Obviously, by logical theorem in that as well, they beat Adelaide. Adelaide beat Melbourne. (laughs) So yeah, Collingwood for my upset. Of the week. All right, guys, like our good friends over at Jurex, we have just wrapped up our tips for you. Let us know in the comments what you think of our tips, where we went right and where we went wrong. We, we tipped the same thing this week, so, um, you know, let's call it a draw. But uh, I really need to start picking some roughies to, to get Yeah, out. no, I'm the same. I, I don't know. But I, I thought last week I did that with the Lions. But anyway, uh, let us know in the comments what's your upset of the week as well, because mm-hmm. we don't actually get too many comments nominating their upset of the week. Um, Preferably the, not the team that you just support, but just <laughs> who, who's a little stinky chance of an upset here. Like the video if you haven't already. Go check out Jersey's channel for the Drew Footy Show, which will be out right now as well. And subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!